welcome all of you um so today's sharing will be on uh, how do you make money um as a creator or an artist okay so some of you are new here so um stay tuned till the end because at the end we will make uh, i have some, some announcement to make and then uh, to also share about our community what we do here and all that okay so shavika will be sharing today on how can you make money um in nft as a creator on uh, and or an artist so nft na enna nu pathinga ka like there's a lot of resources and uh, different definitions out there based on how much people how they understand and uh, depends on their experience so i'll just briefly share like uh, what i feel as an nft so beginner ku simple understand pannona nft na you can see it as a digital asset okay so nft na is a non fungible token where it can be recognized as a digital asset okay how do you make anything as an nft is that uh, you will be uh, able to do that via a blockchain technology or a distributed ledger okay so literally you could mint anything as an nft okay in the form of usually it, it will be in the form of video or picture so ada nft a mint panita adu vandu blockchain la blockchain uh, uh, tech technology la record ada irum so once it is recorded it's going to be there forever so what what's the best thing here about nft is that it uh, it is transparent okay it allows you to prove the ownership okay because we cannot uh, internet or technology cannot lie we cannot manipulate technology right so that's the best thing about nft so um here right this the entire space is super early we are in uh, an infant stage so a lot of things right now are going through from a uh, trial and error and also in a experiment stage so adanala an exact definition or exact a maximize id evlo ku vande monetize or make use panna mudiyone people we are all still experimenting okay so internet or web 2.0 or social media na we know already web 2.0 to to an extent only like there is facebook instagram there's uh, you know social medias we all interacting with each other like discord clubhouse so that's the extent of web 2.0 so web 3.0 especially this nft space or crypto or blockchain space are still in a, in an uh, infant stage so there's a lot of experiments that is being done and um, so as a creator or, or an artist you don't have to be a painter or musician okay you could be anyone as long as you are not working as a 9 to 5 uh as long you don't have a 9 to 5 job you could be uh, an entrepreneur you could be a chef you could be a uh, what piano player anything any sports player no matter who are you what do you do you will be looking to monetize your skill set or your passion correct so monetize pannona you will require someone to pay to to uh to pay for the value that you give right or you could be a, a comedian also right so apdi irukumbodhu nft uh so that's what happening in the reality world right people are paying for value uh for example you like this uh comedian so you pay to attend his comedy uh tv shows or programs correct so nft is going to uh transform this or revolutionize this in a blockchain manner okay uh, whatever that i'm sharing <laughs> might be complicated to you um but you have to i mean you have to study and uh you, as long you are in the space you will tend to understand over time you will have your own definition and your own uh, perspective of what is nft all right so uh, shavika you take on the floor and uh, share your topic tonight okay thank you okay so like linkage said earlier i will be explaining about uh, how to be a successful artist or a creator in the nft space 
of course it's not limited to any one niche like you could be a chef or a pianist or anything but i am an artist so i will be sharing my personal experience uh the common mistakes learnings how i got started and all the basic stuff that you need to get started lah as an artist or a creator even if you don't have any background in arts or music or anything but you have the intention to get started lah so uh, basically my background story is i have an uh, a background in ar and xr like ar stands for augmented reality and extended reality which means that uh if you see filters instagram filters that you guys click and use uh it's it's ar filters lah basically so um before i got started in the nft space i was freelancing and i was doing uh filters for brands and stuff like that and i did have like the knowledge about nfts when i uh, started learning ar and stuff it's just that i did not have any ethereum on me because i'm still a student i started ar just um as a way to earn some money lah pocket money like that savings like that so uh when i entered the nft space i realized that there's not much uh ar artists or uh xr artists in the space which means that even if i were to sell it will be hard the plus point was it was easier to stand out because i have this ar expertise but the minus point is that uh there's not much collectors who collect ar or xr stuff because if i were to create like a artwork it were they have to scan it and then they have to use it and stuff like that so it was a bit complicated so what i did was i went on to learn uh photo manipulation on photoshop so this was like my after a few trials i created this lah this artwork okay it's it's taking some time to work. yeah so this i i did this on photoshop i learned this then i had a friend from brazil his name is otis and he's uh he's doing quite well in the nft space so i told him that you know i know about nfts and i'm looking to mint my art so i learned uh photo manipulation on photoshop and i did some artwork then he saw he saw some of my artwork and stuff and since we are friends he said uh hey you know what uh, i'll just send you some tezos to get started so tezos is a form of cryptocurrency that is used uh on a platform called Hikanang and it's very very cheap at the time like one tezos was like around 2 to 3 dollars like that so he sent me some tezos to get me started on my journey lah as an artist so i minted my first ever artwork as you can see here and of course there's a lot of mistake that i made uh right now it's not for sale but when i started out i listed uh, a lot like you know 30 Thirty and I listed it for like five pesos because I did my calculation and I thought okay if I earn ah uh, five pesos and I sell out all thirty editions, ah uh, it it will give me ah uh, enough money for the month something like that lah when I got started because I did not have the experience so this I would say is a mistake that I did listing something that I'm ah uh, mean experimenting and trying on for five pesos was a mistake because when my collectors collect my art. They see that oh, uh, it's not ah uh, one thing is it it has like a supply of thirty. It's not scarce. So if I had if I minted five as an artist right, and I sold it for like five pesos, then they would have probably got it. So one of my mistakes that I did was ah uh, minting it for a very higher price when I did not have any ah uh, collectors. I did not make ah uh, any connection with any collectors, and I did not have any other friends other than ah uh, artists in the NFT space. So ah, uh, these are like some of the common mistakes that I made lah as an artist. And after this, I'll be touching about how to get started, how to mint your artwork and platforms and stuff like that. So before we go to that, ah, uh, I see a lot of ah uh, creators here. Even in our community, you're like shield. under a lot of posts so i feel like that's also a very very common mistake that i did i randomly used to just go under uh, a lot of famous collectors punya uh, twitter account example nft freak right then i go and shield under like hey buy my artwork like you know this is what it means blah 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 and then i shield and all of this did not work 
and if you see uh if you see my my twitter analytics when i got started this like i had very less followers right so with less followers no connection no friends i listed my art for very 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 high price and then i went and shield and uh, after that along the way i learned that this was all the mistakes that i was doing then after that i improvised so 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 far that are my that that is my background story lah and uh, next i will just be touching about the platforms and what are the blockchains out there and how to get started because some of you who are here might not have understood what i just shared but i just shared just to give you some of my background story okay so as for the platforms there are a lot of uh, platforms on how where to mint your art and how to get started and we do have a um, link tree that has all the materials compiled if you guys go to resources under nft niches we have this um, link tree so if you click on it we have a brief explanation like all the articles compiled video podcast and all on what is nft and all the resources that you need as a beginner so uh, if you guys joined all our previous sessions or have watched our youtube videos i believe you guys would have some sort of knowledge on what nfts are and stuff like that so i'm not going to be spending my time explaining all of that but i will be explaining about uh, the marketplaces that are there and um, the blockchains that are there lah that you can mint your art on so as you can see here on ethereum we have a lot of open marketplaces some of it is uh, OpenSea, Rarible, Mintable, Cargo, Mintbase, Dora and uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, Sync. Okay, so OpenSea is, I feel like OpenSea is like a bit like Pasar Malam like that because uh, there are a lot of good artists but I feel like the market is very very saturated. So uh, if you are an artist or a collector want to get started here when I collect your art obviously you will be spoiled for choices but I personally wouldn't mint my artwork here lah as an artist and Rarible is also a very good platform to get started and if you look at the invite or curated marketplaces we have foundation known origin super rare nifty gateway and stuff like that either lah pating na you guys have to uh, apply for the marketplaces so how foundation example uh, how foundation works is that you guys have to uh, have a friend who has already made some sales so i think if they after making the first sale they will have two invites and they can uh, give the invite to other artists so i got an invite through a friend to this platform but i've not minted anything yet uh, on this platform and if you see known origin also you guys can apply if you are getting started as an artist or looking to get started you have to apply for this platform and super rare is one of the like i think premium uh, marketplaces lah in my based on what i've seen because uh, to submit your one one thing about super rare is that not everyone can get into super rare and uh, you have to like submit your video application and you have you must have like your website and your own portfolio and stuff like that to get started in Supera. Then I know uh, based on what I've learned, I know that you need some recommendation and stuff like that also to enter Supera. So, sorry. Is, uh, uh, is he talking with us? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Loan. Okay, okay, you carry uh, on. Uh, but it looks like he was trying to ask a question. Uh, we keep questions at the end. Yeah, so uh, those who want to ask your questions, you guys can see the live chat box right above our voice chat. You guys can put it there and then later I will answer your questions. So, so far I've, I'm done explaining about the marketplaces. And of course, a lot of marketplaces works very, very differently. So it is up to you as an artist where you want to mint your artwork and stuff like that. And 
uh, of course there's a lot of different different collectors also that come to these marketplaces so uh, the one of the most important tips to get started as an artist is to study your collectors so if you see here nft freaks he's a very very uh, famous collector in this space okay he's very huge also and he suggested that we do this like we find uh, the top 25 sellers in uh, in any marketplace in each marketplace you see here so let's say based on uh, what we have uh, listed here you want to mint your artwork on super rare right you find the top 25 sellers in the marketplaces in your according to your knowledge lah you don't necessarily have to go to the website and see or oh, top 25 no in uh, according to your knowledge if you based on your observation you, i'm sure if you are in this space uh, for some time you will come across some uh, artists who are actually doing well and then you just follow them and see who are they engaging with how are they engaging with their collectors and along the way uh, because nft is very very community oriented they will share some tips and tricks on how to uh, uh, get started as an artist so as for me personally okay she called you can also see all the artists in her list in her list that she has added and these artists are probably uh, people who have interacted with her or are very close to her so you by following this list itself you already get 94 members just like that you don't need to go and manually just find or oh, which artists who to follow like that you just follow you just click list and then discover new list if you're in the nft space it will automatically give you like a few suggestions a suggested list and then you just follow if it let's say you are a pentas.io artist you mean right then you have not had any sales you just follow example and then you click on this list you see there's 39 members here so this artist here artist are uh, artists who mint on that platform and surely out of like probably 38 at least half of them must have had sales or the artist is very actively commenting and supporting me and then they will go and see your work and of course when it's affordable they will definitely click the buy button that's uh, that's the the tips and tricks here lah that i i have done and i also study from uh, top collectors like uh, nft freaks why is nft freaks so okay i think i i i missed i missed the thing but yeah anyways this is some of the top top i think this tip has like worked out for me a lot because if you can see here my twitter if my twitter uh, engagements and stuff i i knew about nfts since january right but then i did not i just uh, get on twitter just see never never do much lah then uh, around until march like that until i i i was just studying see uh, how bot ape are doing their thing and stuff like that and after that when i minted my first artwork my followers skyrocketed to 2000 to uh, sorry 227 and there's a reason why this happened right and the reason is this one of one of the reason is this uh, list lah that worked out for me i just go and uh, follow a lot of random list then i i interact with a lot of people and then another one more important tip is to go to communities right like along the way when you are doing this you will come across people who are building communities in the space so if you see here nft goddesses for female artists this is very very important you guys can just message them and and get their discord uh, link they have a community and the community is very very supportive so once you're active and you're genuinely showing up for others they will show up for you and anna isabel is the founder of the community if you see here when 
from here from this number to this number one of the main reason is this thing this post that she did she featured me in one of her magic art monday because i was showing up for her community uh, sharing a lot of stuff even though i like don't know much about how to sell an art and stuff just generally nft news anything that I come across uh, about nfts i will share with your community and stuff like that so this got me enough profile visits and i also made some sales despite my art being very very pricey i think like uh, at first when i minted there was no sales at all then after this post and after interacting with a few people i got some sales like uh, i think i got like two or three people to buy my artwork uh, so uh, this is important lah what i'm sharing now if you're getting started as an artist because uh, some of the people that i see here they are very good when it comes to minting and their art is probably uh, a lot more better or they they can they are like really top tier artists but if you see their profile and their twitter activities they probably have like three tweets <laughs> or they only come to twitter when they are minting something and then they expect people to buy which is a very very bad strategy lah if that is like you are digging your own grave to to failure like that <laughs> And then on top of that, on top of doing that, if you are going to go and shill everywhere, the, the common mistake that I shared with you earlier, shill in every collector's uh, this thing, definitely you won't get any sales. This one I can guarantee you. So, so um, one thing is you have to interact, find people who have uh, built communities, build a really good connection with them, and then uh and then just give support lah you will you will eventually make sales as an artist and another another tip is once you have uh choose your found, let's say you want you already make up your mind that okay as an artist i feel like foundation is the place for me i feel like foundation is the apple of all marketplaces apple store of all marketplaces compared to other places what you can do is you can just go here foundation and then you google for example one artist right and then you follow their twitter if this person if you see look at their art right if this person has a uh, art sold for 1.25 ETH or 2.75 ETH there must be a reason why they sold it's not just only the art a lot of times when people are getting started they get very very excited and then they go and mint their art and then when they don't get sales they get very demotivated thinking that oh my art is really really good but why didn't it sell let me just go and mint another art again on top of something that is not sold right i feel like that personally is a very very bad move from what i've seen so in case you are looking to mint or have already minted and then you don't have any sale you just go uh you just go to artists who have made sales right then you can see here owned by kello so you just click this person and then you go to their instagram or their twitter and you interact with them not not shill lah. when i say interact don't go shill or straight up message the collector and say hey i've i've done this can you check it out like a lot of times art uh, collectors like this don't even care because if they are collecting something worth a lot their dms are probably flooded with messages like this too so what makes you stand out is the way you interact with them under twitter comments under their posts how you retweet like must be genuine lah cannot just go do shill 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 it doesn't work and you just go uh, like i said lah you just uh, message them on twitter and you just sorry not message you just uh, interact with their tweet and eventually the person will check you out if the person is if the collector is not going to buy your art or anything at least when they look at your pin tweet they will be uh, retweeting your pin tweet which will uh, give give you more exposure to their audiences and stuff like that so this will all lead to you getting sales lah in my opinion and another one more thing is if you see here this this article is a very very good article 
and this is written by Sun J Lee on Twitter. This guy, okay, and you guys can find this this article under our resources NFT resources that we have shared. It is shared and also pinned there, or you guys can also find this under our our how to say link tree. Okay, it is. I think it's. Wait ah. Here. Right. So if you see here, he says the same thing. Roughly, if you see, he says like he shares like seven tips. The thing that I mentioned earlier: community. Find people who build community and be a part of them, and then. Selling your artworks come natural, right? So this is something that he has shared too. And another, another one more thing that he has shared that I've not touched about is your NFT site is not your portfolio. Like example, <laughs> you have minted a few art on your foundation, and then you, when people ask, hey, can I have a look at your portfolio? You don't go just shill your foundation profile. Maybe you can show your Instagram, the work that you've done before and stuff. But this one, people rarely like collectors or anyone rarely ask for your portfolio, unless you are applying for platforms like Super Rare and on. For Super Rare, you must need ah uh, your own website, and your portfolio should consist of art that you have not minted, which means that your Instagram or some stuff like that before you have minted or get on any NFT platforms, you must have art on there, so that will be a part of your portfolio lah. So coming back to this, this is also the mistake that I did, and he has also written about it. Mint less, not more. And one one good person to study around this artist is El Rock lah. El Rock is a Malaysian Indian artist, and he has made over half a million dollars in sales. And uh, the funny story is, you might think that oh he must have like. Hundred collections or whatsoever to to sell over two hundred fifty Ethereum worth of art, but the funny thing is he does not have that many art. Like, ah, uh, wait, I I shared something. Yes, if you see here, El Rock is an artist and he has like ah uh, over seventy thousand ah uh, followers on his Instagram. Okay, and. He before enter his NFT space, this NFT space, he has a lot of artwork. He's very very experienced and stuff like that. But the smart thing that he did was to apply for Super Rare, because he's very experienced and his art is memang top class lah. And he only have nineteen creations on Super Rare, three creations on Foundation, and this thousand art no need to count lah. This is for a collectible projects like ah, uh, like if you. If you go on OpenSea, you see like sly guys. This, yeah. So if you see, there's like one k item. So this is all hand drawn by. Ah, uh, I don't know whether it's hand drawn or computer generated, but yeah, El Rock is the artist behind it. So even before this, right, he was already doing well, and if you look at his, his creations, basically he only had twenty one creations, you know. So, if you really sit and think about it, he moved very, very smart in terms of sales, and in terms of building a really good, ah, a really good ah connection with your collectors, and in terms of where and when to mean your artwork. So in that sense, I memang follow El Rock very, very closely, and if you are an artist, I really recommend you to follow him because. Uh, one thing that uh, it comes back to this lah. One thing that a lot of artists, ah, uh, who come into this space and want to get started or have already gotten started, they just simply mint, you know, like they mint like hundred or two hundred, and then they work very very hard for it to get the sales and stuff. But one thing that you don't understand is, the more scarce your art is, the more value it carries. Because what difference does it make if if you as an artist are gonna come and just mean hundred or two hundred of your piece, 
and there's another best artist out there who's also doing the same like you are creating a lot of competition you know so in that sense there's nothing different that you do <laughs> in terms of value or anything to sell at the end of the day despite your art and all this is a market where you do business right so you need to understand and study what advantage you have over other artists so yeah this this is something to consider when you are getting started or have already got started and another one more thing is foundation is not a holy grail this platform that i mentioned foundation for artists uh it's a bit exclusive lah in my opinion it's like the apple apple brand of nft platforms in my opinion like not everyone can get on to here you have to have the invite to get on here and stuff but at the same time you could also be doing well in other platforms because some people they wait forever for a foundation invite and they never mean their artwork at all looking to get into foundation or waiting for the invite so if let's say you are going to mint on open city right okay i'll just give you a uh, indian artist la example we see okay this this lady here she has minted 123 items right and then she has this many collectors worldwide okay so if let's say you are minting here you know the style of your art first right like example i really like to if i were to create something it would be something like this that has human 3d models so typically i would study the platform and also go and interact with collectors who like this type of art you let's say you are getting on a platform like like open sea you don't uh, example you are not getting on foundation you want to get on uh, open sea the initial stages you find someone who has a community interact and then after that you see visitra example she's doing well you go to her twitter and see how is she how is she promoting her art or who is she interacting with and then you interact with her or her collectors and stuff like that so again let's say they don't buy your art right the most they will do is at least have the courtesy to like come and retweet your art which will eventually get you sales but not all collectors will want to collect your art that looks like this example maybe some collectors are drawn to this type of art i don't know what it's called but this type of art lah so another one more important tip is to know your art style and then you interact with a certain collectors who really like that type of art too so this way you are studying your collectors you know you are not just simply like like a lost person <laughs> being all over the place and stuff and at the end of the day it doesn't get you the results that you want right so you want to study visitra and art and art, as an artist who sells well in open sea you can go ahead and just study her twitter what she does and stuff but in terms of getting you sales or collectors you have to find someone who has your who does your type of art or like uh depends on your art style and then you find them you interact with their collectors again the the interaction must be genuine lah and that will eventually help you in a lot of ways and this one i believe i've spoken about it never ever message your collectors to shield your work and another one more thing is let's say you are an artist right and then you already got the sales some collectors they don't like it when you uh publicly go and tag example linkage buys my art right he's a collector and then i go and say i go and tag linkage hey uh thank you so much for buying my art uh, i really appreciate it so that you in certain situations you have to check with your collector whether they are okay with being publicly thanked because some people they really want to remain anonymous they don't like being thanked so in that cases you you can just thank them in your dm so something like that lah and yeah this this is a waste of energy really i don't now this i don't even try to shield my art or anything anymore because i feel like a lot of fake collectors right they just come into the space it gives them engagement you know you commenting or shilling your art in hopes of sales will only gain them followers 
and you will be left with nothing. <laughs> so, so that that's the that's my opinion on shilling lah, and very very common mistake again. Like I cannot, uh, I don't know how much to stress upon this, but this is a very very common mistake made by a lot of people who enter this space. Even I made the mistake. So it's no point. Consider it no point lah. And a, another last tip is plan and play the long game in this space if you are gonna get started as an artist, which I believe is what uh El Rock did in the beginning. He started. He I think he got to know about this space around like February or something. He did not straight away mint his art. Uh, I don't know exactly what the story is, but he only minted his art few months after that. And he said he was studying this space first, which means that for someone who has twenty one artworks and have sales over half a million dollars, he really knew the game of what is he getting into, and not just blindly mint and just sitting there like hoping for sales. You must know exactly what you're getting into and what you're doing, and just take the first step. So, uh, these are I think some of the very important uh tips lah that I've shared, and yeah, so how to get sales I've shared and community joining communities I've shared, and uh another one more thing is this is very very draining this clubhouse aspect because when I wanted to get sales I also went on clubhouse, <laughs> talk to people day and night. Like twenty four seven, literally from the time I wake up to night, I go make a lot of build a lot of connections, talk to people, ah uh, who mint on the same platforms. Like ah uh, last time I minted my art in Hikenang. You see here. Wait ah, uh, it's loading. Yeah, so I mint my art on Hikenang, right? And then when I after I learned from my mistake, I delisted this, and then I minted this. See, out of ninety nine, there's only nine remaining available for sale. So the others are sold out. Then I sold this for a lesser price, but the results are what's important, lah. I sold ninety out of ninety nine. So for this. <laughs> I was literally day and night on Clubhouse talking to people. I even when talking, there's a certain things that you do and you don't. If you just go up a Clubhouse room, like example is a Hikenang Clubhouse room, Hikenang artists and collectors, something like that. The topic. You go inside the room and then you just say, "Hi, I'm an artist. Uh, I just I just minted my artwork. Can you have a look at it?" Again, you're making a mistake there, lah. If you're gonna do that. I think one thing that uh anyone who enters this space uh should keep in mind is to not make it all about you all the time. It's not all about you all the time. You have to learn to just give first, and then later the byproduct will be probably uh retweets or sales or engagements on your Twitter account. So when I I I I learned this eventually when you are on Clubhouse a lot and you're interacting with people. You will learn uh how to get them to see your artwork, right? So when someone is in a room uh talking, you have to say something that is related to the topic, add value, right? Like let's say they're talking about uh Hikenang, artists and, and collectors, and then the main topic is about uh security. So you must you must say lah what you know about security, talk to them, engage in a conversation first. And then see if you have personal, uh, personal experiences related to security and stuff, and then later, you can talk about your artwork once you already uh warm up a bit with them, and then you say what inspired you to create your art, and stuff like that, and then they since the you guys are have already formed like a bond or you've interacted, or at least you care about the other person already, they will naturally go and have a look at your art. So this is something that I learned. Another one more thing is, I think Twitter tips I've shared, and there are a lot of ah、uh, discords also. If you wanna learn, ah、uh, like ah、um, NFT for Indians and then NFT Malaysia NFT, then there's international even Hikatnang ah、uh, has a discord. So you can just go, 
and make friends first then later the shilling and all is later lah it's not it shouldn't when interacting with someone your first intention shouldn't be to okay i want to sell so you just go shill no that's not the way you have to at least care to form a connection with the person first and yeah this i've shared and i think i've shared a lot of uh, important things with you so next i will just share uh if you're an artist with no let's say you want to be an artist then you have no prior experience of art or how to get started then probably i can share some resources and some softwares and platforms and how to join uh this nft space as a collector lah okay shavika yeah before you share that can you share uh like how much money can really people make being artist and and minting their art that share about it half a million dollars besides that besides elrog that, is someone he is already uh, in a traditional world he is a expert he's not a normal okay. average average guy you see but for an average maybe share like how much you made and share some of the artists out there especially like malaysians how much are they really make how much they made and yevolo cash pakla idle Okay, example, I'll, I'll share Shavon lah, this girl. She is a Singaporean, okay? Then if you can see, she is she was a photographer. Then due to her the pandemic, her she couldn't go out and take photographs and stuff. So what she did was she started learning 3D, like this work that you see here and all. She started learning 3D last year and then she got into the space. I think around this year. So which means that this person has no prior experience of 3D art they did not go for graphic designing and stuff like that you know they learn because they couldn't pursue photography due to the due to the pandemic learn on their own self taught in a few months and then she minted her art right yeah you can see this was her first I think this is the first ever art she minted on foundation and she made around this much 7000 US dollars upon uh minting her first ever artwork if you can see here last year she learned few months and then this year around february 28 she minted her art again she learned her 3d last year then why she only minted on february you have to understand and if you see her uh where is Yes, if you see her Twitter, she did not always have this many followers. So she definitely planned her moves ahead. What is she going to do? How is she going to interact with someone and all? If you can see here, she this is NFT Asia is one of the uh fastest growing community in Asia lah, Asia overall. So she became an admin there. Then if you see just now I shared about NFT goddesses. She is also part of the community. So what she would have probably done is go and build community or contribute to the community at value make a lot of friends create an impact and then she went and minted her art. So not only uh, on top of selling she also made $7000 and if you see all her artwork she sells for more than 1 Ethereum. This is $5000 for this art that she made. This art is five thousand dollars, and this is also another five thousand dollars. So average, if you have, ah, uh, if you just put a calculation of five thousand dollars, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times five thousand dollars is forty-five thousand dollars. She has already made till date. So that is a rough calculation of someone. Who had no background in creating all of this, you know? She literally learned on her own from YouTube and stuff like that, and she has already made forty five thousand dollars. And in case you want to give more example, ah. No, no, that will do. Good example just now. Yeah. So, if you are the the next the next ah uh, topic I'll be talking about is let's say how to get started from scratch zero. You have zero experience, zero knowledge. How to do that? But before that, I want to drink some water. <laughs> so, guys, like what Shavika shared just now, 
she shared from a uh, artist point of view okay so ipa neenga ketukiru irukku like all of you who's watching um, if you have the same passion as uh, shavika and uh, all the artists out there which means um, you should probably either be good at photoshops photographies or you are willing to learn okay 3d 2d um, art arts la basically art so ungalku la ekni adla passion irunchina or you want to start off you want to kick off uh, uh, to learn about it and all that then what as uh, like shavik shavika shared will be very useful for you okay and then at the end of the day like i i, I can add some points here um other uh, the minting and nft like or art mint pandrudu anyone can mint like all of you right now can just upload your selfie or any jpeg or your dog's picture nft vandu yaar unalo mint panna mudiyum it's it's public it's a free market um and it only costs about like what uh okay depends on the blockchain that you want to uh mint your nft or your art so the most expensive or the well known blockchain is ethereum okay so adula mean panna poringa it will cost about 100 dollar 200 dollar okay sort of that uh if you are totally beginner if you are on a very low budget then an alternate uh blockchain uh to mint your nft will be like tezos okay and then like solana as well and there are a lot of blockchains out there so depends on your piece of nft like artists or nft na like shavika shared the platforms like foundation super rare idella more suitable for artists so come back to my point minting an nft is super easy as well the process is like less than 5 minutes if i'm not mistaken and then the cost is also relatively very cheap like tezos la i think few dollar it only take few dollar for you to mint an nft so minting is one part but that's not that's where that's not the place where the money is kaas anga minting la kaas illa the money the you will make money when people buy the on the transaction okay similarly like deepali ki cookies se poringa na anyone can uh, can bake cookies and try to sell but how do you make success or how do you really make money is when people buy your cookies right so that's where sales and marketing is okay so again it's a skill set uh, if you already have that s- some sort of uh, knowledge or skill or experience in sales and marketing in traditional world or in a, your your day job okay then you will find it quite easy for you to sell your nft because like uh, all the tips that shavika shared is basically sales and marketing okay uh, sales and marketing na it really comes down to okay marketing na it basically what it means is that uh you showing up putting yourself out there okay how do you do that by getting attention by by putting yourself out there la so uh, for example like shavika shared is for you to do network for you to interact with people you shouldn't be selfish selfish and that you will not be able to um get success in in sales and marketing it's all about other people how can you add value okay so that is marketing and then sales is about uh your price point uh your supply how scarce is that okay because people buy like any nft like shavika she also minted the nft right um yes a handful of people might really love the art and the art und ummiyave pudichirukke so they are not uh, they are willing to spend that amount of money to own that piece of art because they really really love and like uh, looking at it for 24 hours or what but adu und very handful handful amount of people but uh, since the space is very early i would say about 70 80% of people out there are actually want to make money so they are not really buying because they love the art but they are buying because they sort of want to speculate okay they want to make money so how do they make money is that by buying your art okay if or art vandu 5 ringgit ku vaangra na he wants to sell it at 10 dollar or 15 dollar or at least 7 dollar and that's how that's where he make money so 
uh, when people are approaching in that manner it's not anymore it's no longer about your art uh, you can have a decent looking art okay but it's not really about that it's about you who are you that's the question how valuable are you uh, how do you carry yourself okay uh, who are you or uh, how valuable are you is the is is what determines how i uh, is what determines and will give value to your nft okay if that makes sense uh, you are the one going to give value to your nft so if you are already someone and if you are already a hard working person a really uh, inspired a uh, really motivated and you have a long future uh, you going to really be serious into this and then when people start to see that and realize that they are going to invest on you so people buying your nft is another word or another way of people investing on you so as long as you are growing you are making success you are making milestone in the space your nft that you produced 5 years ago will have value also it will go up in value as well um so end of the day it's a free market uh, and it's global okay in the malaysia matter like it's global and it's 24/7 so whatever that shavika shared is from a artist uh, point of view so as i said you um either need to have experience in photoshop or in photography or 2d 3d or you are willing to learn but nft is not only about that the whole nft space started or get the or got hype on this niche because artists now and uh, uh, arts now and will be highly relatable or easily uh, got the traction or traffic on nft it got started with this niche but nft is not limited to only arts again like i said nft on on our daily life we could make uh, anything into nft so even if you are not an artist or look or a good photographer or you are not willing to learn you could be in other niche um random as all upon you could be an uh, a pianist or educator or a sportsman as long you have an audience or a follower okay you can create an nft and give utility to it and give value to it okay so for example or a musician okay a musician will not be able to uh, mint a nice nice looking arts and all that right a musicians when they songs music produce pandranga but they can also mint an nft so for example uh, i am a musician and i can take 10 selfies of my face and mint it as nft and i can say those who own this nfts uh will be able to listen to my limited edition song or will be able to uh dine in with me or uh, or will be able to have this vip uh pass uh to my concert you know utility so you could be in any niche as an entrepreneur and you could also get into nft and mint your nft out there and give utility uh, behind your nft which will enable and which will one your followers audience your customers to buy your nft okay so ipa na explain pannadala may not be the best way to explain or to define but i'm just trying and making an attempt here uh, so be stick in the space so the more you understand about nft the more you will have ideas and uh, and road map on how you can monetize this okay and all of this does not take a huge sum of money it only takes your effort uh your commitment your dedication okay how keen are you to learn this space okay this is not about uh investing at all it's about you making money from the scratch all right so savika proceed mm, wait up give me one minute na ivlo pesiyo ni no one minute kekriya like a bit more water okay so i continue ah thank you so much okay so if you guys look at my screen another one more example before i t- i tell you about how to get started from scratch right like all the resources the softwares and stuff is this girl she's nft car girl her ni- car girl her name is lil lilzy designs then if you look at all the artwork that she has created 
this girl also learned 3D in the span of 3 months which means that she had no uh, experience in 3D did not go to any school no teachers anything she learned on her own before she learned on her own she had some sort of experience in photoshop like photo manipulation all this is photo manipulation okay then this i think this is all 3D this is all 3D so she also had like only 3 months of experience and she if you look at her followers she's doing quite well now like 1167 followers on this platform called foundation and she has over 15k followers and when i started following her she wasn't here i think she had like only 2 or 3k followers something like that very less so people that you want to study and learn from are like this type of people like shawon Lindsay design people who know how to sell and also do well because if you see there's a lot of other people also who are creating this type of artwork but there's a reason why she is selling and the others are not so um and if you look at uh, the amount of her artwork like how much she would have roughly made the average is 0 0.2 la we can say okay Dip there's a uh, different different uh, price that she has listed price points but if it average when the number 0 0.2 which are 0 0.2 is i think around $5000 i think oh sorry $900 so like a $900 she create around 10 artwork so she has already made easily $9000 and for for us it's huge money and Again, keep in mind that she has no prior 3D experience or anything. She just learned and just got started. She built her Twitter audience and she just produced artworks. So this is another example, good example other than Shavon Na. Okay, so now I'll be sharing about I'll be sharing about how to get started resources, softwares, platforms, and what else does it take for you to get started in this space? This is this is uh, like zero, la. like you memang just created your Twitter account, and then you don't know where to start, which type of part to even do, and something like that. So, for starters, of course, like I've shared above, you need a Twitter account. If you are going to get started in the NFT space, generally, you need like a Twitter account. Clubhouse account, you need to make your have your Discord, and these are like the three main uh, social media platforms that you need to have lah in order to enter the NFT space. And if you're a creator, this is like must have, uh, like the minimum at least the min minimum requirement lah for you to grow in this space. So again, on how to sh uh, how to grow your Twitter account because in order to make sales you know that you need to grow your Twitter account, right? So some of the things that I've done here is just uh, interact with a lot of people. Just randomly go and interact with a lot of artists and a lot of uh, collectors and all. I will generally just go follow this list. You see, this is my list, pinned list. Uh, it's top artists. And this is a private list. La. Nobody else can view it. And this will be uh, when I open my Twitter app on my phone. The timeline when the Tanya top artists so every day I go interact with them. So uh, like I shared earlier, so you guys just go randomly follow, interact with them a lot. They will follow you back. And one one good uh, phrase that I learned from uh, joining a lot of clubhouse rooms and Twitter spaces are instead of shilling your name, uh, shilling your art, you shill your name. If you are commenting and make, building a lot of connections then these numbers are like inevitable. Easily you can grow. Like I started out with like 30 followers. Now I have like I think 2,000 followers something. So you have to grow your Twitter account after start, after you enter this space. This is for someone who wants to get started from scratch lah. Zero. And after that, after you enter and then you are growing your audience, like you have more followers now, you are making more friends and all. You need to know of course, the softwares and uh, like what are the tools you need to get started and this we have shared here I think if you go up here in our discord we have shared in creators room 
then you have to open the pin messages okay then yes you see if you want to create visual art or gifs you have to use photoshop you can use photoshop obviously there's a lot of other alternative and this is another tip like for me when i was getting started i started literally from zero everything was from scratch so i had to grow my twitter audience and another one is uh photoshop was too pricey for me because if you want to get like the original one <laughs> i couldn't afford it at that time so what i did was i just you if you go on shopee if you are starting out like me like from zero and you're a student and all that sort you can just go to shopee and just get photoshop i think like some are like seven ringgit like that then you can get like lifetime photoshop this thing ah uh, like uh, access to photoshop that is if you want to do like photo manipulation uh, visual art gifs and stuff like that if you feel like you can draw and then you want to do illustrations right you can use uh, again adobe uh, illustrator this one also you can go to shopee like really cheap lah it's really cheap sometimes you can get like a package like photoshop uh, illustrator and a few other uh, softwares like for a very very cheap price like within 15 ringgit like that you can buy and then you can also use sketchbook autodesk i think this is a free platform and if you feel like okay i don't want to start with like visual arts or gifs or all this stuff you want to get started in 3d art you can use blender which is really like absolutely free to get started it's a free software it looks like this okay and then you just have to go download and just start using just follow tutorials and stuff for the tutorials it is also for this for 3d ah yeah. you can see here this is in 2d 3d you go to the pink messages right then i've shared a lot of resources best 3d resources then ah uh, Yes, this is for Blender. You want to learn. All this is free resources and also uh things that you can learn from lah. And if you have any questions, you can just drop here also. People will answer. And other than that, there's a lot of other type of art that you can do. You you don't have to limit yourself lah. Basically, if you're getting started, one thing is it can be very very overwhelming, especially after you look at like. Shavon, Lil Z design, then L Rock. There's a lot of type of art. Like L Rock is an illustrator, and then he uses like uh, Photoshop and stuff also. Lil Z is like three D and also Photoshop. Then Shavon is only three D. So when you come across a lot of different style, it can be really really overwhelming in the beginning. Like you don't even know where to where or how to get started, right? So one thing you you need uh, is the clarity lah. Like okay what really speaks to you right like what type of art you really want to do it could also be something as simple as this let me show you lil z okay you could be doing something like wait up Looking at the right thing. Okay, yeah, you could be the for all that we know, we it, this could be your art style. Like you really feel like ah, you really like creating this, you know, like just it looks very simple and all, right? You could even be doing this, despite having a lot of other type of art in the market. You feel like no, I just really want to do this. It will sell if you have. If you can uh, build the audience and follow like all the important tips that I gave you, or you can also go learn on your own on how to sell. Also oh, narrative, also right. Yeah. The message or the sentiment narrative lah. How do you sell? Yeah, yeah. How do you sell? All that is a skill set of its own lah. Like Link K said, for me, I just learn just from listening to people talk. Like I like I said, I spent a lot of time on Clubhouse and Twitter Space. Oh, that was all I did for some time. So, ah, uh, when someone gets a sale, right? I just listen. Oh, how they start start talking, what they are talking, how they interacting with the person. 
then CC they get the sales, right? So all that I just observe only. Then I learn like that. So if this is your art style, then it's very easy to make. You can just go to Photoshop here and just do that and start learning. Then I have another friend. This is monitor room. So So ah this you see this is all very easy to make you know this is colorful hearts if this could even be your art style you don't there's no limitations as to what someone can create it could be anything that you want to create and it will sell given that you have the audience so first that uh, now that you're starting from zero number one you'll be doing is again having the social media platforms that i told you clubhouse discord twitter grow your audiences on twitter and then you know your art style okay try not to feel overwhelmed when finding your art style and then you get on any of these platforms and I've also give you the loophole as to how to get started without uh, making a hole in your pocket lah. Then for 3D, again, uh, there's a lot of 3D software out there. Like 3D itself is very, very huge. Like it could be uh, car 3D models or human 3D models. And other tools. One thing that you, when you are getting started as an artist, knowing the tools are very, very important or else you could be stuck in a very very simple process like example you go on a uh, blender right it's a free uh this thing and then you already know your art style then you are like okay uh, now i want to create something so this will be the first thing when you open blender this will be the first thing then you but your art style is making a 3d human model then you will feel like, oh, now how am I going to make this box into a human 3D model? So that is where your knowledge as to how or what tools to use to create the 3D model comes into place. Okay, so for like example, for human 3D models, you can use, uh, yeah, meta human. This is example that I'm giving you. So basically what this does is, it allows you to generate uh, human 3D models according to your preference. And when you are exporting the 3D model, let me just teach you. I'm just showing examples now, so that you guys don't feel overwhelmed when you enter this space. So example, <laughs> this looks really, really horrible. But when you are entering this space, you already figure out, okay, uh, my type of art is probably just to learn 3D, 3D human model. Then you go to Meta Human, you generate your own uh, 3D model. Then you just have to make the model here. You learn how to make the hair. Then for the clothes, there's different software that you wanna, you wanna uh, make. Uh, not everything you should be on, or has to be done on Meta. This is other software for all the finding and things that you might need. Then this is the amount of the art. So one of a free free software you just go join uh blender blender punya discord and then dust 3d punya discord and then uh then you can also go to facebook just 3d facebook groups you just go join a lot of place you already know your style and then you just go join free facebook groups and then you just join you see there's this many members right then you don't know anything you will get definitely you will get stuck when you're doing something just post make friends here and just ask someone uh out of 205k members don't tell me not one person will answer if they don't answer it's okay you just keep posting and just keep trying again someone will help you out in this like this like you just go join a lot of facebook groups 
Discord groups, once you've identified your style, then that will make it easy for you to learn. And you won't feel so discouraged lah. And if you want to learn 3D art on your iPad, if you have an iPad, you can always use this Nomad Skull. I think, I'm not sure if it's free, but you can try. And another one more thing is, uh, you can also use Procreate on your iPad, if you have an iPad. Then this one, you can draw, you can create mm, GIFs. Mm, and then I think you can do a lot of things. I'm not even sure already. This one I'm not gonna use. Then if you wanna, if you wanna be a VR artist, right? Uh, in VR you can also create three D models and stuff like that. But then you will be uh using Gravity Sketch or Oculus Quest. I don't know if you if you VR is a very very new this thing also. You can venture into it. It looks like this lah. Then you will be you will be using this thing to draw. Okay. Then some of the famous uh not famous lah, someone that I know. This girl is a Malaysian. She is a VR artist. If you look at it. So like this lah, it will look like this, something like this. You will be able to create. VR is also very cool. Again, I have some sort of knowledge on AR slash a bit a bit VR but I feel like the market is not like there's not much collectors or this thing yet so maybe in the future if I were to create or sell I might uh, give AR utility to my 3D art or stuff like that or collaborate with someone so this is VR you can you can buy Gravity's uh, Gra Gravity Sketch is I think a software that is used on Oculus Quest I'm not so sure so these are the platforms that you can create art on and then uh, yeah. and uh, platforms I've already explained just now okay there is a lot of platforms and a lot of different different blockchains there's Tezos blockchain okay Tezos now and they uh, is cheaper but one Tezos I think is six or seven dollars and you need within two Tezos to get started so that's like all around like 14 $14 to just mint your art and stuff lah. Okay. Uh, that is a different platform. And Tezos now and there are two platforms. Calamint, Hikernang. So Hikernang right now, they are going through some shit. Uh, they said the platform is uh, discontinued and stuff like that. But you, we can just wait, wait and see what is actually happening because the community is trying to build it back. But this is where I got started. And then there's a lot of free... There's... Uh, some people who give Tezos for free. Like my friend was very kind-hearted from Brazil. He helped me. He helped me with uh, Tezos. So, when they um, the Tezos Fawcett Net, no, 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 no. I got attached all the resources in the link tree already. I don't know if they are still giving. They, they will give, basically, they will give uh, uh, you Tezos to get started. Okay, I don't think they have it already. So never mind. And the platforms uh, to mint is uh, you'll be using uh, Calamint or Hikanang, like I said earlier. Then if you want to mint on Ethereum, there's a lot more collectors here compared to other blockchains. Solana is also a very good uh, place to mint, but it's very fairly new and I have no experience minting on Solana or how the ecosystem works. So probably selling on uh, Solana would work very differently than he can uh, on uh, what selling on Tezos. So Ethereum platform pating na open sea, rareable, mintable, idala rake. And I think mintable is uh, somewhere that you can mint your art for free. Okay. And uh, let's say Ethereum is very very pricey, right? Like you feel like oh even uh, some platforms like foundation you need hundred or two hundred dollars worth of Ethereum to get started to mint and to list your art. When you minting, when you are putting up your art, there's two process called minting and listing. So after you mint, you have to list it. So these two process, you'll be paying gas fee. The gas fee could be really high depending on uh, the platforms. Okay. So let's say you need Ethereum to get started. So I'm explaining this for some for someone who's getting started from zero, right? So you need the Ethereum to get started. Somewhere that you can go is this place first mint fund for Southeast Asian artists okay you can just go you can apply apply to be an artist 
you can either contribute or get funded by these people to get to mint your art on ethereum so this is not the only way you can get ethereum to get started if you don't have the funds this guy nft freaks also gives out ethereum for you to mint but i think you probably need to put on a lot of uh, work to get his attention because you see his followers another easiest way to get his attention is to just go to his twitter space that he hosts every day and just interact with him and say that you are an artist show your work all of that and then you say you would like to get funded or get started you are like you need some ethereum to mint your art Obviously, all these collectors will have their requirements or something that they see before giving Ethereum to someone. So, either you have to keep in mind. So, for everything in this space, there is a way. You Let's say you want to meet on Solana. There's definitely a way for you to get funded in order to get started as an artist. So, other than the, uh, the one, again, I'm not sure, but I know there's a place because we have hosted clubhouse rooms with Rahim in the he's also in our discord here you can also message him probably if you want to get started in solana as an artist uh, not message just for the fun and then no never do anything and have them message me <laughs> this guy you can ask him he is very very experienced in solana stuff so uh, if, but let's say you want to get started minting is very very cheap in solana but adu kuda illana you can message him and say uh inga na vandu minting fun and give and all like that okay so either one of the platforms to mint your art again to recap for ethereum to mint mint fun when the first mint fun you can apply or you can go to nft freaks this guy okay to have your ethereum and get your, get yourself funded for to mint on ethereum platform for tezos there's tezos for set net or Uh, okay, another one more place is also Hikatnang's Discord. Ala Tezos Fountain no noruko. Adala you guys can go and get funded. They'll give like two Tezos or something when you set up your wallet. Another place is Malaysia NFT. They also give Tezos. They have minting parties. You can join. Again, not join to this one. I have an experience where I tell people, I help them say where to get Tezos. they just they never mean their artwork before not an artist also then they go and tell shavika asked you <laughs> shavika said you give free uh tezos give me the money that's not how you do it huh? you have to contribute no matter where you go to get funded you must add value must contribute <laughs> and then finally when when the time comes you ask for the tezos or you join their events and get yourself funded So Malaysia NFT has their uh, minting fun, minting minting party. Yeah, minting party. So I think uh, Saturdays they will have it. So when you join, um, uh, I think they'll give you Tezos or BNB or something like that. They do have uh, fundings lah for Malaysian artists. You have to be based in Malaysia. So these are some of the places for you to get yourself funded if you're starting from zero. Okay, then. what else ah huh? i think that's all lah and then another one more thing that is very very important in this space is consistency lah of course if you are going to get started you want to learn <laughs> you're going to start get started from zero and then suddenly you open your twitter account you try to interact with someone for one week then you see oh i only gain like 10 followers i mean let me just take a break and come back and do it later no that's not how it works especially if you are in beginning stages that is personally what i did and what i would advise obviously it works different for some uh, for everyone lah not everyone can grind like that maybe other people have different phase as to how they work so you in terms of building your account or learning a new skill you have to try every day no matter how tired you are at least a little bit <laughs> at least one comment or two comment or something like that if you're extremely exhausted from trying to do something from scratch because it can be very very draining so uh 3d say putting na every day at least one small step or else you will forget or you will lose touch of what you're learning and then you'll probably have to go again and start from scratch same i feel like with twitter like let's say sometimes uh you take a break you don't come for like you don't interact for like one week your 
I feel like your how to say your engagement like that all will drop a bit. So, in order for y'all to be consistent and for anyone who intends to get started, yeah. I have uh done this art challenge. I think I posted on general chat too earlier today. Last month also we had this. We had uh Ruben, Manisha, and a few others join. And Ruben was the winner lah. He was the most consistent, and he's very very talented, uh, in terms of creating something. So 